I'm Yoda Harvey, reading from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and you're watching Poets House Presents. I'm reading from my new collection, You Don't Have to Go to Mars for Love. The first poem is Segregation Continuum. After Ella Baker and Glenn Ligon. Layered in black on black on white canvas, we who believe in freedom cannot rest. Looking at the way we look, looking forward, stepping back by way of upturned neck, by way of three steps back, looking black coded, by way of black modes, by way of reconstruction, by way of insurrection, by way of colored fountains, by way of elected Democrats or elected aristocrats. It is obvious we are a present, though we have been discomforted at school gates, at rental offices, at museum entrances. Even we cannot rest who believe in freedom. We are to some an irritant, an iresome, tiresome lot. We do not subscribe just because something comes out of a leader's mouth, out of the mouth of a tyrant. So we are too difficult. We are much too difficult. We are more, we are much too aware. We are much too marked. We are all that matter to us that matter. We are the most comforting presence by way of nod, by way of pound, by way of sup. We are always fashionable except when we do not try. We do not try to insult except when we do. But we do not hesitate to speak of the things about which we agree or disagree. We participate at the level of our thinking, by way of our thinking, by way of our mass expression. We who believe in freedom cannot rest where once hundreds and even thousands of we ordinary people had taken a position that made us very uncomfortable when we decided, for instance, to walk rather than take the bus. Snowbound, a resistance. This is our land, they said. They were all pasteurized like the milk, like the germ that could not survive. There was blood on the incline, across the smooth white expanse. Airy gasp and galvanized tin, the smoke from the smokehouse, deep snow near the back door. Birch bark baskets, snowsuits and boot prints evaporated with maple syrup. Oh, pride, snowbank and father, snowplow and mother, Firelight and plume, weathered bark and scroll. Drift into the kiln, then I'll rub your feet with snow. White snow, gray snow, red snow, smoked snow, Ohio snow, Michigan snow. She lived constantly on the ragged edge of danger, a drifted over cornfield she sank deep into. If she could only picture the outcome, the end of the trek, the promise, what her people sometimes called the other side. Womanhood is a lost paradise. The slightest mistake could bring disaster. Down weakly in a snowbank, she slid into her own self. Posting bail. Keep missing me, you say. Armchair, step stool, tree stump, church pew. I'm thinking up a list, half listening. Sit back and hold still, I tell you. My list is lacking. Sooner or later, I say, you'll come up on the sheriff. And by April, the bondsman on the fourth floor Sofa, swivel, chase. He'll be waiting for the right answer, some hint of repentance or 
pencil-skirted decorum of a straight-backed, arm-rested ghost of a former teacup-tipping self. You'll have to meet, he'll say with a twist of his belt, certain conditions. You'll think of your cousin by marriage then, the one who insisted you meet certain conditions, the one who wanted so badly to act like a, like a man. Call this number and that number on this day and that, then maybe I'll help you, your cousin by marriage said. Apparently, men make ultimatums and operate under certain conditions and look women in the eye and say, be more professional like your cousin in man face, like the bondsman. What's my deadline? You mutter to no one in particular, hoping to change the subject, leaning back in your chair. The baseline. I was in a neurosurgeon's waiting room awaiting Arrow's test results. He'd slammed his skull on the base on the basketball court and his pupils pulsed cartoony, black spirals and asterisks and loony exclamations. His dizzy days had placed us in the clipboard's teeth, snapping. NBA season, the finals, and Dr. Phil was interviewing a boy who killed his mother bashed his mother's head with a sledgehammer and set her house on fire. It's ritual, said the doc. It's self-soothing. To bash someone's head? To set a house on fire? Okay, doc. Okay, America. Okay. I forget how daytime gnaws us till evening if we linger too long in its jaws. Everything wrong with us seemed to glow from the insides of a flat screen. I wondered what was up next. A razor, a switchblade, a machete, little bits of bone, the little boy's blonde brother nearly dying too. Okay, homemakers. Okay, ratings. A nurse walked Arrow to an exam room. Free throws and foul shots chatter, winners and losers, favorite players. LeBron James slept somewhere between games. How many times had Arrow hit his head in the past few years? Bring it in, Arrow said when I joined him. Chill, he said. Did this mean he was the kind of son who'd hug his mother tightly before turning away? The kind of kid who shrugged off blonde boys? The kind of kid who'd leave home at 12 and assemble a band and adorn his fro with feathers and cowries and swear he learned the birds and the bees from Netflix, Grand Theft Auto, and the internet? Okay, worst fears. What was the last thing Arrow remembered? A thwack, the court's distant border. I forget how competitive he gets. I forget how fragile. Diagnosis, no gains for three weeks, supervised exercise, rest. Okay, inevitable. My mother didn't care much for television. Turn that stuff off, she'd say. Talk to me. I forget how mustache begins in shadow, how hairlines fade gradually. What makes a child turn? One year, Cleveland fans burned LeBron's jersey. Okay, Christians. Okay, Cavaliers. I forget how every son leaves us at least once. I forget how quiet a house without television. Son, don't bring any spiders home or lovers or trash talk. I forget how we bring those anyway. I forget how hypnotic the television. Eat your dinner, son. Eat your dinner. It's been an honor and a pleasure reading here. Thank you to Poets House. My book is You Don't Have to Go to Mars for Love on Four Way Books. And you can find out more about my work on Instagram, Yona Harvey Writer, Facebook, 
Yona Harvey Writer, and Twitter, Yona Harvey, or you can hit up my website, yonaharvey.com. Poet's House is poetry for the people and a library filled with books and resources. Thank you, Poet's House. Bye. If you've enjoyed these programs, please consider giving a contribution to Poets House. For more than 30 years, they've kept the door wide open to everyone for the joy of poetry. Recently, they have temporarily had to shut the door and are reeling from the financial implications. Please give even a small donation if you can. Thank you.